This is Dr. David Shine, and welcome to Business Law 101. Now, uh, one of the ideas I do uh, some uh, business leases is that uh, uh, people pay monthly rent under the terms of a lease, which is usually for a year or more. Uh, most uh, commercial or uh, storefront locations are for five years or more. Uh, many of them are set up on five, five, fives. Every five years, you renegotiate the rent and renew the lease. So there's, uh, it, it's interesting when they say oral or implied. Folks, this is not how you're gonna do life. If you're uh, in the business and you have an office building or you have a shopping center or you even have a house that you're just simply renting out, uh, any interest in real estate for a year or more must be in writing. And we'll actually be looking at that in one of the chapters in module three contracts. We will actually be talking about the statute of frauds. Most conveyances of real estate must be in writing. So that's is pretty straightforward. So again, I don't want to see oral, I don't want to see implied, I want a nice written express contract uh, that provides for the lease of uh, certain real property. Now, um, we mentioned license in our introductory chapters in the first week of class. License is a use. So a good example of a license is you drive into a, a big parking lot and you, you pull a, a stub and then when you drive out, you pay for parking based on how long you were there. That's a license. The only thing you get is you get to park your car somewhere, uh, hopefully legally within the parameters of that parking area. You don't get any right to the property. You can't pitch a tent there. You can't leave your car for more than so many hours and things like that. So please be sensitive to that. So most leases, as I just said, do last for a particular time period. And uh, it is common for them to renew for year to year afterwards, but that's not required. Uh, I do not like to ever see an at-will lease. There'll be no point doing a lease if you just said, well, here's the lease and you're, you promise to take care of it, but it's at however long you feel like being in there. Uh, with uh, COVID-19, some landlords, landlords may be desperate enough to rent on an at-will basis, but I really do not anticipate very many landlords would be willing to do at will. Now at sufferance is a little bit different. At sufferance is a very specific situation. So you have a, a tenant with a one year lease. As the lease rolls up, the landlord says, hey, we're gonna raise the rent. And the tenant says, nah, I'm gonna move. I'm not willing to pay the higher rent. So the landlord accepts the tenant's notice that at the end of the lease, the tenant is gonna move out. Big surprise at the end of the lease, the tenant does not move out. So if the tenant doesn't move out at the end of the lease and has not renewed the lease, the tenant is at sufferance. And so uh, that's a very important uh, uh, concept. And so one of the things is, is that uh, they are, uh, uh, subject in many cases, uh, leases are written to say, if you don't renew the lease and you do not move out, then you will have to pay 150% more rent than you paid before. So if you're paying $2,000 a month and do not move at the end of your lease or renew the terms, you may be held to 1,500. Uh, uh, or I'm sorry, if the lease was 2,000 a month, you may have a 50% penalty, which means the rent would be 3,000 a month uh, during the sufferance period until you either moved out or negotiated a new lease.